good evening and welcome uh, to Great Grace Church of Chester and Ellsbury Port. Uh, welcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to be uh, here online for uh, the next little season. This is our evening Bible study for Great Grace Church of Chester and Ellsbury Port. And um, if you can hear us and see us, please leave us a like. Um, uh, reaction, an emoji, a comment, uh, just so that we know that you can hear us and see us. Um, this evening what we're going to do is be carrying on a little from this morning's message. We were looking today at uh, Hebrews chapter 6. Before we do that, a little reminder that you can find us at um, ggchurch.co.uk or you can find us in Backford, Chester um, come and join with us on Tuesday at 5 o'clock-ish we will be doing Bible the school classes we're doing Revelation uh, and uh, it's an exciting class to be part of so come and join with us for that and then um, we also have uh, a ladies Bible study on the 19th of October which is uh, at 1.30 in the afternoon and then 7.30 in the evening on the 26th of October which is also a Wednesday we have a, a visiting uh, pastor from Switzerland so come and join with us then if you would like to be part of any of those so tonight uh, we'll pray we'll give this time to the Lord and we'll just trust him and then uh, we will uh, just uh, open up the word and see what God does with it Heavenly Father we just thank you Lord now we worship you we thank you we uh, ask your strengthening we ask your wisdom uh, touch each one Lord now we ask minister your life Lord be with those that need a special touch we think of um, Tristan who has been sick as well Lord be with him protect also Hayley and Jane as well Lord we pray uh, be with uh, Vivian Lord this season comfort there Lord we ask and we touch Myrtle as well heal and minister your life and any other needs that are within the body of Christ we hand them over to you now Lord that you would just encourage each one minister your life Lord now we give you the glory we want to pray for our, our brothers and sisters in Ukraine we want to pray for our brothers and sisters in Florida any troubled parts of the world as well Lord we ask that you would just really come through for each one Lord now minister your life to us tonight Lord and speak to hearts in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen ok so uh, what we're going to do is read from uh, Hebrews 6 verse 11 it says and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end that you be not slothful but followers of them through faith and patience inherit the promises for when God made promises to Abraham because he could swear by no greater he swear by himself saying surely blessing I will bless thee multiplying I will multiply thee and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise for men verily swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise 
the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us which hope we have as an anchor to the soul both sure and steadfast and which entereth into that within the veil whether the forerunner is for us entered even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the words that we have just read. Lord, we ask for your guidance. Now we ask your anointing, fill us with your spirit. And just use this time for your purpose, for your glory's sake, Lord. We want to just give you this time. We pray that you touch hearts, Lord. Fill it with your life, fill it with your spirit, and anoint by your Holy Spirit now. Uh, we are nothing, we need your spirit, we need your words now. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Okay, so, uh, just thinking about what we have read tonight. Uh, yeah, there's quite a bit in there about the uh, the hope that we have we were focusing this morning on the assurance of hope that hope is a sure thing um, think about this we mentioned it I think as we were closing in prayer uh, faith is defined as evidence uh, faith is is evidence and substance now we the world tends to think of our faith as something airy fairy and you know it's just a, a notion but actually according to God it is something that is very solid and very permanent and here again we hear we have hope which is not as we were saying this morning a vague notion of maybe possibly one day we, if we think about it enough and we we want it enough it's not like a sort of a wishful thinking it's not like a, um, a tap three times and make a wish or whatever no here God says our hope is an assurance of hope these things with God are solid these things are permanent as we were hearing in the revelation class the other day how actually um, when uh, God made prophecies of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ 333 of them were fulfilled to the letter when Jesus was on the earth in his actions, in his obedience, in who he was, in where he was from, how he lived his life, all of the details of his life and all of the, the things that happened to him, uh, those prophecies were fulfilled and there are still prophecies of the end times yet to be fulfilled. And we look to them but you know, uh, prophecy is a sure word according to God hope is something to uh, endure and and hope is something that we can have assurance in uh, and these things are, are, are given for our benefit uh, we have to get God's way of thinking rather than our own way of thinking uh, f for our life because actually our own way of thinking is very changeable and very transient but the Lord's promises are solid, reliable, permanent. So, you know, this is our heart attitude tonight, uh, is to trust in what God says to us 
and, and to enjoy what God says to us and to live by the promises uh, and by the, the faithfulness of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, we see actually there's it, it talks there about the the oath as well uh, one of the questions for the Bible school homework as well as about um, the Lord Jesus Christ how is he presented in Revelation 1 a faithful witness was one of the answers we can read that in, in Revelation chapter 1 and uh, we were talking with Jim the other night at the prayer meeting about um, you know the rule of first mention he was he was saying first mention of witness was actually the story of Hagar and Beersheba the well of the oath now think about this here tonight we have this oath as well a promise a solemn uh, promise that that God has made to Abraham and he swore by himself and I, I like it because it, it says there that you know um, the swearing of an oath in verse 16 is the end of all strife think about that for a minute think about a legal battle and it's like who's winning who's going to be there but what happens in a court of law isn't it you swear to tell the, the whole truth and nothing but the truth what do we swear on the Bible? We were talking about that in a rap today after church. And but it's a way of ending a conflict. Conflict of interests. Who is right? Who's whose rights have precedence? Who who is more important today? Uh, how does it work? Uh, and what is the, what is the situation? Well, you know, there's an end of the dispute. It is when uh, when God swears and says he, he swears by himself. Uh, we swear by by Almighty God. We swear on God's word, um, and he was not able to do that. The highest thing he could swear on was himself. Uh, so he he said that to Abraham as we read this morning in, in Genesis 22 blessing I will bless you uh, but I like that you know they, it's an end of a dispute end of the argument nothing more can be said against it because God has sworn he's sworn an oath he's made us a promise now think about that the Lord Jesus Christ came to the earth and he laid down his life uh, and he has become our promise, our sacrifice. And it's the end of the story. There's no more dispute. There's no more um, negotiation over things. No, it's just that. It's the end of strife. We don't have to argue it over it anymore. He's done it. He's accomplished it. And uh, the end of the passage that we're reading is talking about him being a high priest and entering in within the veil that actually the Lord Jesus Christ is our great high priest it's an unusual picture here because the Lord Jesus Christ was the sacrifice and he was also the high priest now the, the Old Testament temple was somewhere that the high priest the holy of holies one person would enter in there once a year and they would bring blood they would bring a sacrifice and it was such a holy uh, place that actually it was not allowed for anyone else to enter in now here we have the Lord Jesus Christ who is able to go within the veil why because he is the Holy of Holies he is God the Father He's able to enter in there. But he goes in there, and he goes in there as a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Not the Aaronic priesthood, not an earthly priesthood. 
by the priesthood that God ordained that Melchizedek met uh, Abraham uh, with, uh, with with bread uh, and, and wine as a refreshment he came to sort of have life when the battle was over and this is the picture here that we have of the Lord Jesus Christ he's a priest and he's going within the veil and this is the picture of our hope that it goes in it enters into a place which is holy of holies the, this, it's the hope that is an anchor here that, that, that enters in within the veil it, it's a little bit, it sounds a little bit cryptic at first you know what's it saying here but no it is talking about our hope and our hope is founded in the holy of holies that is to say that sacrifice has been met we have a great high priest and all of the details to make us enter in have been satisfied we can approach with with boldness the throne of grace why because of what the lord jesus christ has done he's our great high priest and he has entered in within the veil and this is our hope this is why it is uh, the assurance of hope this is why it's a sure hope because it goes right to the heart of the throne of god right to the, the nature of god's character and it gives us confidence and it's and it's a link to us you think about that an anchor is on a chain isn't it an anchor has a long chain but it keeps the boat secure but I like this picture of the anchor because think about this we have pictures of Christ as our solid rock and that's true we have pictures of uh, Christ as our firm foundation and that's true for building our life when we're when we're when we're thinking that way when that is the the image we 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 have uh, Christ as our as our refuge our strong tower yeah these are all great images of the Lord Jesus Christ and of God the Father uh, yeah this is great permanence but think about this the anchor here the hope of the anchor it's it's a slightly different picture because it's talking about our hope it's not talking about the Lord Jesus Christ himself he's the source of our hope he is where our hope has been anchored the anchor goes within the veil into the Holy of Holies and that's where it is anchored but the anchor itself is our hope but with that think about that with an anchor an anchor is not rigid and an anchor is not is not static the link between the the anchor and the ship the chain there is very flexible there's plenty of room for movement there now think about this in our life we will have ups and downs we will have difficulties we will have different seasons uh, and there is room there for us to move but the hope in Christ is an anchor that doesn't move that's fixed that keeps us now there might be a lot of things like the old hymn you know safe and secure as the billows roll you know and uh, it uh, so where is it it says that it talks about being tempest tossed I read it and I didn't really realize it was actually in the scripture but yes tossed on the tempest uh, it's in the Old Testament I think one of the one of the prophets maybe it was in Isaiah but anyway you know it's like yes that's the other uh, let's count your blessings isn't it it's 
speak so bad, being tempest tossed. But uh, yeah, <laughs> think about it for a minute. This life will throw us around. This life will uh, will sometimes be very calm and peaceful, like the sea. It could, but we could sometimes be at a low ebb, uh, or we could be uh, on on the raging seas. We could be in the storm of life. There's all sorts of different natures of the of the sea. I think our cat is going a bit wild. There. I don't know what's happening. Speaking about the the billows uh, rolling and uh, uh, but uh, <laughs> so yeah we we have that um, a picture of the sea and yes its ups and downs it's turbulent the the storm on the sea Jesus was able to calm the storm at sea when his disciples were with him. And in the same way, the hope, the anchor, keeps our mind fixed. That whatever the situation, it might be a beautiful, calm night with the stars shining and the moon out on a peaceful sea. But the anchor is still there, keeping our, our hope fixed. It might be a raging, stormy night where we are being thrown around and we don't know which way is up and that is the thing with a ship if you've ever been on a ship on rough seas um, I've never been on a ship in very rough seas but I have been uh, on certain boats when it has been a little bit rough and what happens is you know you don't always know you, you, you you know, you're trying to walk and you're trying to walk in a straight line and sometimes you're going from side to side because the, the ship is moving around to such a degree. I have been on uh, a few uh, crossings where, you know, it, it has been quite rough. And, uh, but uh, you sort of, you, you get used to the, uh, the movement of the, of the, of the boat. Uh, but yeah, but think about it. Sometimes we don't know which way is up. We don't know how. We don't know whether we can walk straight in a line anymore. Why? Because the the sea is raging. But what keeps it firm? What keeps it secure? What gives us hope is the anchor. And that's the same for us. The anchor is our hope in the cross of Calvary. That's something that is not going to move. We were saying this morning about how uh, our faith cannot be lost, our salvation cannot be lost, our testimony may be lost, our fellowship may be patchy at times, but our, our salvation, why? Because it's a secure anchor. It's there. There's a hope, and it's founded in Jesus Christ. And because it's founded in Jesus Christ, it's immovable. It's not going to go anywhere. And we, by the chain of our faith, are linked to that hope. Uh, and yes, maybe the time, there are times when uh, we, we feel that we're going under. But the hope is still there. And the Lord Jesus Christ is still there many believers over many centuries have faced incredible challenges uh, was it D.L. Moody famous preacher um, in Chicago at the time of the great Chicago fire the whole city burned down they lost their home they lost their church they lost, uh, you know, their source of income. They lost everything. It was like, wow, it, it was a crazy season. Diffi difficult times for people. But what kept people going? Well, you know what? There's an anchor. Uh, our hope is in Jesus Christ. Adoniram Judson burying his family, his children, and several wives as a missionary in Burma. But what kept them going? was the hope as an anchor 
This is our, our faith, this is our life. Many people today face challenges, very difficult seasons. But actually what keeps us firm is the anchor in Jesus Christ and it goes within the veil right to the heart of the Holy of Holies that we have a connection to the very presence of God now in the Old Testament people were afraid to go near they weren't even going to approach the holy mountain um, as it says there why? Because they were the presence of God was awesome and and, and fearful, and uh, people were were afraid to draw near. But for us, because of the cross of Calvary, because judgment has already been meted out on the Lord Jesus Christ, that fear is removed. But there is an opportunity. There is a. Uh, a way in into the veil through the hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ it's anchored in the firm place in the best place possible in the presence of the living God he gives us the leeway he gives us the ups and downs grace is there and he gives us that chance to be knocked around but remain firm there will be times when our faith is challenged. There will be times when we struggle. There will be times when we're doing very well. But there's an anchor that keeps us in place. And the anchor is the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you tonight for your faith in us. And our faith connected to the hope that is the anchor that is within the veil right in the presence of the holy of holies thank you lord that you give us that tonight a sh secure sure place in an uncertain world yes as we face this life being uh, moved up and down on the tide of this life as we see the the, the, the seashore come and go uh, we see highs and lows we, we find difficult times as we maybe move around like a ship moves around on the surface of the water thank you Lord that we have got something that keeps us in place keeps us grounded keeps us secure keeps us focused and it is the Lord Jesus Christ the, the anchor, the hope in him that you entered in within the veil that you were able to take the blood to the mercy seat of the holy of holies that your sacrifice was enough that you as a ministering priesthood are enough for us Lord and we just thank you Lord now for all that you've done for us and all that it means for us and Lord, thank you that we have that security and we have that stability because of what you've done. Not based on our own emotions that go up and down, not based on our own uh, thoughts that maybe are challenged here and there, not based on what is going on in the world or in our lives, which could leave us feeling like we're in a shipwreck. But thank you, Lord, that there is something that keeps us secure and safe. The hope, the assurance of hope as an anchor. Thank you, Lord, for, for your security in our lives. And thank you for all that you've done for us. And Lord, we pray if there's anyone who doesn't know Christ as their saviour, who's never trusted and doesn't have that sure hope. Lord, we pray that this will be the time when they say, Lord, I know I need a saviour. I can't make it on my own, I'm frail, I'm weak, my life goes up and down, and I fear that I could be washed away, but I need some security, I need some permanence, I need stability in my life, and I look to the God who loves me, 
the Saviour who died for me. The one who's not going to move, who's not going to go away, who's not going to leave me. I need some permanence and some security in my life. I trust you, Lord, as my Saviour now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we're going to sign off for tonight, but we'll see you again soon. For those that would like to join with us, please, on Tuesday night, and uh, see you again next Sunday. And uh, keep your ear to the ground for other things that are going on as well for this next few days and weeks. Take care, God bless, and bye for now.